Hey everybody, uh, Gadget Groupies out there in internet land. I am joined today by the lovely and intelligent and talented uh, Trisha Hirschberger. You're so sweet. Um, I wanted to do sort of wrap ups for manufacturers. Okay. You know, like I don't like doing the the top 10, this is the phone you should buy, or this was the best phone of the year. What I like is kind of so going hard. back. Well, and it's it's never right. You know, it's always exactly. Like, it's your opinion. You exactly. have to say the best phone of 2015. I am O. Exactly. <laughs> you have to, but no one clicks on it if that's what it says. Right. So you have to say the best phone of 2015. Then everyone clicks so that they can either say, "Yay, thank you for agreeing with me," or "You're so wrong." <laughs> because that's not the phone I bought. <laughs> <laughs> because internet. <laughs> so, so I couldn't think of anyone better to talk about the state of Samsung oh. in 2015 <laughs> than you. And, and, I, and I, I mean that genuinely because we sort of bonded. Uh, last year over our love of all things Samsung. True, very true. I mean, because with the phones you have on the table, like I'm still rocking my Note 4. You have your Note 4. You have yeah. your Galaxy S6 uh, Active. Yep. I have my Galaxy S6 Active. I still have an S5 Active. Oh, like, the S5 Active was a great phone. Great phone. Because I find over this last year, and this has been a, a very common talking point in the comments on my videos, mm -hmm. are the people that are frustrated, maybe falling out of love with Samsung, maybe looking at other alternatives. And uh, I, I think it's it, it's this weird mix up between hardware and software. Yes. Where some people are, are disappointed with Samsung because of software things and some people are disappointed with Samsung mm -hmm. because of hardware things. And then there's like this whole new crew of people that are ultra diehard Samsung fans that kind of came around this year. New Samsung fans. New Samsung fans are Oh brutal. yeah, oh yeah. Big time. The phone that you brought from this year was the Active. Yeah. And I know you're a Note girl. I am a Note girl. So in using the Note 4, was that yes. a conscious decision that you haven't jumped onto the Note 5 yet? Uh, or? So it's contractual, mostly. <laughs> uh, you know how that rolls. Uh, but I, I would say my conscious decision, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the Note 5 is following the lovely new Samsung, and by lovely I mean heinous, new Samsung <laughs> trend of not having a removable back, therefore you cannot micro SD and cannot removable battery. Yeah, if I can't stick my fingernail in here and rip and off the back, do this, then that I'm makes not you cranky. happy. Okay. So, <laughs> because there have been a number of manufacturers that have addressed similar issues, though. Yeah. So, like, let's say, uh, like, for example, on your active. Uh huh. You can't pop the back. You can't get to the battery. No, I can't. But if they had included another door for, say, a, a micro SD card, would that address some of the concerns? That would address half of my concerns. Half of your concerns. So <laughs> yes. I mean, there, there would still be like, so you still do care about removable batteries. I do. Because I I don't swap batteries on the fly very okay. often. But one of my all time favorite refreshes is mm -hmm. after a phone's about a year old, mm -hmm. I rip off that back plate. I put in a fresh new battery, and it's like I've got. You know, like that out of the box right. battery life all over. Right. And that's exactly how I am. I went through a short period of time where I was swapping batteries on the fly. And then I just found that with the um, affordability of today's portable batteries, yeah. you don't need to do that anymore. As well as, should something go wrong with your battery, rather than having to buy a whole new phone or send it to the manufacturer to be fixed. Right. I can just replace my own battery. Because you're a grown-ass woman. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what I was just going to say. Because I'm an effing grown-up. Can we curse on your show? I don't want to not curse. I don't want to curse on your I, show. I'll, I'll give you one F-bomb. I try and keep it PG-13. Okay. Yeah. So I <laughs> I know how to effing change my own battery. Right. And I would like the company to respect me enough to let me do that. So people who have been watching my channel know <laughs> that I did full reviews on both the Note 5 and the Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. So this is the, nice. the curved, curved screen if you want to Oh, let me touch it. Hold that. And, mm -hmm. the re and, and people who follow this channel will know that the reason we only have the Edge Plus here is mm -hmm. because the Note 5 is the only phone I've ever broken you while broke reviewing it. You broke it? Oh, no. And because we have the same PR rep at AT&T, yeah. that's probably why you haven't gotten a Note 5. I have not yet. gotten one. <laughs> it's because you broke it's because it. because of me. That's hilarious. Okay, so were you drop testing? No. Or uh, so water testing? I, 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 or? I refuse to do gadget destruction porn. Okay. The Note 5 took a tumble from waist height, waist height onto uh, asphalt. And broke? And all it did is it it landed on its, on its edge, yeah. this, this aluminum edge. Yeah. And it's this teeny little dent in the side of the phone. And then you could see on the screen ripples <gasps> as it just sort of liquefied all of the guts inside the phone. So the glass didn't actually break. Uh, the, the glass on the outside of the phone did yeah. not break. The glass on the back of the phone did not break. The aluminum dented on the side. And then everything wow. inside the phone was just wrecked. That's awful. 
That's so, awful. I, as someone who drops their phone all the time and does not like to use cases, yes. I almost never have a case. So on I got, my I got, I got a lot of haterade from the. Oh, you should just always put your phone in a case. No. And they're like, what's what's the <laughs> point of having a pretty phone? Right. If you have to put a case on if it. If you're so upset about destroying your phone, get an active. Totally. My note four, it, you know, you guys can't see it, but it, I have dents and dings <laughs> all over this. She does. It's true. I do. Like, look at this corner. It looks like someone chewed on it. No, that's <laughs> dropping it on the sidewalk. I do it all the time, and this sucker has lived just beautifully. Well, and that was one of the things, and I wonder if the Note 5 would have survived if the force of the drop <gasps> had ejected the battery. Maybe. You know, like if the back plate had exploded open. Oh, we've open all dropped and, a phone and where the battery just, like, flies out the fly back. Fly into pieces <laughs> and the memory card well, pops out for no reason. Well, then there's somewhere for the force to go. Right. So that's that's why we don't have a Note 5 on the table for you to play with, unfortunately. <laughs> well, and I'm so glad that you told me that because I was honestly considering the Note 5 as my next phone. Because like you said, I'm a Note girl. Right. I love that little S Pen. I'm a big fan. I have a Note tablet. I use it. I actually use it to Photoshop thumbnails for yeah. YouTube videos and stuff like that. Like, I, it's very productive for me. And I know that not everyone has gotten into the swing of the note. Mm -hmm. um, and using the S Pen, a lot of people think that it's just a gimmick. But when you really get the hang of using it, it's quite lovely. Right. And if it's well, something you depend on, oh, and that's don't that's one of my favorite things about the word gimmick. It's, that's not a feature I use. That's, that's a gimmick. That's what gimmick <laughs> means. Yeah, exactly. Now, if you can safely say this is a feature that 99% of consumers don't use, then I think you can go so far as to, to say, say this gimmick. is a gimmick. So then to lose things like the memory card slot, the removable battery, right? the IR blaster oh, that I no! use as, as my universal remote. Do you use it as your remote? Oh, I mean, so like I, because this is one of the things I want to talk about with you is I, for a lot of my daily driver usage, I've switched over to LG. Wow. Yeah. And, and uh, oh my God, I have so many questions for you because <laughs> LG is doing a fantastic job with its phones. Like just in what I've gotten to review and what I've gotten to get hands right. on with and play with, they look great. Practicality wise, they're doing all the right stuff. Pricing's good. Pricing's good. And the only reason that I'm still like, oh, I think I'm going to get a Note 5 is habit. Habit. When I originally left iPhone and first went to Android, I got a Samsung. Right. And it was so world changing that I've never gone, gone back. to anything else. Yeah. Either. Yeah. So that's actually one of the, uh, I, I'm really glad you brought that up because I'm so happy you're here to talk about this because you, like me, are not a TouchWiz hater. No, I don't hate TouchWiz. Come on, internet. Bring it on. I know people hate TouchWiz. I don't hate it. I'm very used to it. I'm very comfortable with it. It's right. Like we were talking about productivity, it's given me plenty of productivity over the years. It's enabled me, you know, when I want to get into spats with my iFriends to be able to say, <laughs> look what my phone can do that yours can't. And a right. lot of those software features were TouchWiz features before yeah. they were Android. I don't like the color palette for TouchWiz. I don't like that candy colored look that's okay. like they're trying to make their AMOLED screens look punchy and juicy <laughs> under all circumstances. Right. I would actually like very, very dark themes. Okay. So now that I can theme devices, I usually go to a very dark theme okay. on my phone. But it's it's the backbone software that I think a lot of people dismiss as not being a part of Samsung's customizations. Mm -hmm. And that's TouchWiz. It's smart stay so that your phone will kind of read your face a little bit and the screen will stay on a little bit longer. It's split screening apps that Google still has not delivered right. on Android, which I don't understand the point of a phablet if I can't put can't two multitask. things on the screen at the same time, yeah. this is sort of where uh, you know because, like I said, I've been I, I've been switching teams over, and so switching teams is a really big deal. Yes, it is. I, I I never want to dismiss or be overly casual with someone who's saying, you know, like I've used the iPhone, but I'm thinking about getting an Android. Oh, you know, like <laughs> whenever people say that, I'm like, I'm gonna warn you, right? It's gonna be a big deal. It's a big if deal for like the next month and a half. Your life's gonna be really hard. <laughs> like I ju I'm just let's lay it all out there. It's right. not gonna be easy, but if you want to make the change, I'm here for you. Because I, I feel like as geeks, <laughs> we have that superpower, right? Like we can make someone feel amazing about a purchase. We can make someone feel terrible yeah. about a purchase, and it doesn't really even matter what they purchase. Right. Like someone, if I don't like someone and they they buy my favorite phone, I can still make them feel like crap for buying that phone. But why would you? But why don't would you? Mean. You know, that's what I mean. And so is especially <laughs> when when we see, I think that's part of the commentary that always gets glossed over is is when when one of us geeks goes to talk to someone in our family or in our circle of friends who's looking at buying a different phone, mm -hmm. and then um, they say, well, like, oh, I'm thinking about getting an Android. Get an Android. It's so much better. You can do all these things on it. And they gloss over the fact that there's still going to be a learning curve. Or that just the, yeah, the muscle think. memory of how the thing fits in your hand. Yeah, it's going to be very different. It's going to be very different. And so 
you were looking at the Note 5. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to talk you out of being a Samsung girl. No, I'm no, not, that's fine. I'm, I'm genuinely interested on what it was about LG that's making you switch teams. It came about because of my experiences with the Note 5. Okay. Where the Note 5 walked away from what I think is still one of the all-time best-built phones in the, the history, in the history of smartphone mobility products ever. The plastic back. Uh, yeah. Oh, that like leatherette. Well, and it's grippy. It's got a nice grippy feel totally. in the hand. So even though the phone's large, it's it's easy to hold on to. A hundred percent. And I, I've never felt like I've needed to put this in a case for no. daily life. No, not at all. And like, I, like I've said before, you know, I drop this thing a million times. Every time I'm like, oh, God. And every time it's fine. You know, people are like, what are you going to do with that massive thing? Right. Uh, I put it in my butt pocket. That's it is a back pocket I phone. It. I mean, for phablets, that I, even for and me. it's fun. Like, Unless you have a G Flex that is perfectly formed to your butt cheek, you're not going <laughs> to sit down with the phone in your butt pocket. You're just not. Oh, I hope we see another good flex. But so, <laughs> so when when the Note Five, because it does, it, it like it just sort of cups and supports. It's really a beautiful <laughs> thing. Butt cheek. <laughs> it's, it lifts and separates. Oh, no. um, the, <laughs> my LG rep's going to love that. Yeah, Samsung, in my opinion, has always been the forerunner in the Android world, or at least was back in the day, was yeah. doing different things, was giving us something different. And I have seen a trend, at least in my opinion, of how they represent themselves in retail stores, how their marketing is, of trying to follow Apple. Yeah, I do think you lose a lot of your core fan base when you change something that's so inherent to your brand and right. what differentiated your brand to be just like another brand. I mean, like I look at... The S6 Edge, I look at any of the S6, you know, and, and I'm like, it's a beautiful phone. It's an absolutely gorgeous phone. To me, it's too much like an iPhone, and I don't want an iPhone. Even down to the speaker holes being kind of grilled out in the same way, it's it's kind of a bummer to see. It's a bummer. That's exactly what it is. And I mean, it, it, and like we were talking about earlier with the wave of new Samsung fans coming in, it's great the people who want the beauty and the simplicity of the iPhone but want the Android operating system mm -hmm. can get that now. But please don't change your whole line to that. <laughs> Make that one offering for those people, please. And have the phone stepped up in beauty? Sure. But I, I was they're... never with Samsung for the beauty. I was with them for the practicality. For for as much as I want to say, you know, like I think this is probably one of the most aesthetically gorgeous designed phones I've ever seen. I think so as well. So long as it stays on some kind of stand, <laughs> like on a pedestal with beautiful museum lighting. Yeah, <laughs> we'll light it perfectly. <laughs> and you never touch it because I go through a feedback loop on this phone, something fierce. Really? Where it's just second nature on any <laughs> other phone. I use it and I kind of just wipe it on my shirt and I put mm -hmm. it in my pocket. Yeah. So on this phone, and I caught myself doing this, like how how Rain Man <laughs> OCD. So I, I was using the phone, yeah. and I go and I wipe it, and I'm talking to someone, and I flip it, and I wipe it, and then I look back down at it. And oh, it's got thumbprints on it And again. I wipe it again. And then I'm, I'm f actually consciously thinking about the fact that because I just wiped it on my shirt again, that these fingers yep. have touched the back. I would just give up on the back. I'd be like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, back. You're just not gonna be pretty. I got so much uh, I got so much hate mail on my <gasps> edge review because I even mentioned it in the review. I was tired of trying to clean the phone off to shoot video of it. Yeah. So I'm just gonna oh. show the phone how it looks as I'm actually using it. And I got people like, Oh, you're just trying to make Samsung look bad. Oh wow! Yeah, the the new Samsung fans have been the most brutal. Like my because my, they came for the aesthetics. The features and the reasons why I I fell in love with Samsung are kind of being minimized, and I feel like this is a phone that's designed by statistics. A hundred percent. Yeah, and that's what I mean. So I I can feel like they're taking away the things I love about it. But obviously, the user like you or me is not their target demographic. They're basing it on statistics. They're basing it on what's going to sell the most units. And it's shown by the wave of new Samsung fans that have been brought in. So when I, revo when I reviewed the Galaxy S6 Active, actually, a lot of people were asking me, I have the S5 Active now. Yeah. Why should I upgrade? And I was like, I, if I were you, honestly, I, I would just keep the S5 Active. It's a great phone. Like, yes, there are incremental upgrades, but... It, it, a lot of this, so Note 4 phone. to Note 5, I don't feel... Like that's an upgrade as much as it is a lateral move. S5 huh. to S6 actives, mm -hmm. I didn't feel like that was an upgrade. 
It's just you wanted to pick different features. So if your lifestyle features like the removable battery and the memory card mm -hmm. are more important to you, then yeah. stick with the S5. Mm -hmm. And you're swapping with not being able to pop off the back. You are getting slightly better waterproofing. And so, yeah. It, I so mean, if you're going you for the active for that, that, you don't stuff, have to worry yeah. about the port covers. Exactly. So if you're going strictly for that, great. Awesome. But the actual phone usage... Not that much different. Not that much different. But moving into 2016, what will keep you Team Samsung? What are the things that you would like to see the company move back to or maybe even walk away from? Doing something new, not something that's a copycat of what we've seen Apple doing. But it, okay, so for example, here's here's one that didn't work, but I appreciated the try. The <laughs> air gestures. Yeah. Okay, so when they had that commercial come out mm -hmm. where the guy's eating the ribs and like just doing this over his phone, not having to touch it because he's got wing sauce all over his hands. <laughs> that was awesome. That's the kind of thing that even if it doesn't catch on, Bravo, Samsung, for trying. Yeah. for trying to attack a problem that is a very practical problem that we have in our everyday lives. Right. That's something new. And yes, when you try out new tech and you're the first one to do it, you're probably not going to have all the kinks worked out. It's totally. not going to work perfectly. But I love the innovation. Brainstorming different things that are maybe still a pain about phones. And the biggest one of those is how we interact with it. So when we're talking about augmented reality or putting a phone in a dash and having it project a map up on the windshield, these are ways that we are consuming the information and interacting with the device. Right now, and up until this point, we've been consuming the information on a screen and interacting with it via touch screen, which is very natural. Mm -hmm. We see it like, you know, we see normal things and we touch things like we touch normal things. Great. That's certainly a much bigger step from the slide out keyboard <laughs> or like a touch pad of some sort. Right. It's much more natural. Natural. But the next step will be the next natural step. Mm -hmm. And what will that be? And that's what you see a lot uh, when you're talking about augmented reality right. is can I grab things and move them around? You know, mm -hmm. when we're looking at uh, Iron Man, we're looking at Tony Stark <laughs> interact. That's how we want to interact ideally with our technology. So basically what you're saying is you're done with Samsung. You're over. <laughs> You're you're gonna you're gonna be going to the iPhone seven oh. end of discussion. Oh oh no no no! I honestly <laughs> I I have a lot more research to do, especially from following your channels and stuff, because um, mm -hmm. you you used to be a, a product rep for Samsung a long time ago. Yeah, and, now, and I had an iPhone then. <laughs> <laughs> but but now it's it's that you legitimately and genuinely use Samsung to get your work done. And yes. it, was, it wasn't so much like I, I wanted to put you on the spot, like, mm -hmm. oh, you need to be up on every little m mega pickle and giggle flip that Samsung. <laughs> All the giggle right flips. Now. All the giggle <laughs> flips. They're, they're super fun. So the rumor is for the Galaxy S7 mm -hmm. is that they will return the micro SD card slot, but the the SD card will be formatted specifically for the phone. So it oh. lives like internal storage. Well, but... and without, I mean, when you're getting phones that are sold in 16, 32, 64, and 128 varieties, where each jump is over $100 of a price differential, that's insane. When, when a 128 you... gigabyte card is like 70 bucks. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's insane. <laughs> it makes me so sad. It makes me feel like we, as the general consumer, are being effed in the A. <laughs> Not gently, and it's not good. It makes me not really good. sad. And I think that's a perfect note to go out on. <laughs> you are being effed in the A, internet. You heard it here first. Well, just thank you so much for joining me. I know this this, this like became a bit more of a catharsis, <laughs> less like a perfect. We're gonna talk about the state of. Let's talk stocks yeah. and what to invest in. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely, I was so, so glad you could join me. And um, where can people on my channel find more information on what you're doing, projects you're working on? If there's something you need to plug. Yes. Um, so my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Trisha Hirschberger. I do uh, a vlog series plus tech and gaming. And I also produce content for a lot of other channels. Currently, I host the show Super Gamer Builds, which is in conjunction with PlayStation on the channel All Me. Right on. Um, and I also have a bunch of new shows that I'm not allowed to talk about coming out with the Escape Fest. Oh, but you can still talk about your Twitch stuff, too. Oh, and my Twitch. And I have a Twitch on, on channel, Twitch. too. Yes, I have a Twitch channel, too, which Juan was just on I recently. I was just on recently. <laughs> um, but yes, twitch.tv slash Trisha Hirschberger is my Twitch channel, and you can see fun stuff there. And I also do um, YouTube gaming streams for Escapist every Thursday.
birthday. So lots of stuff. If you follow me on Twitter at that girl Trish, but no I and the girl, you'll get updates about all that stuff. Absolutely. Go check out her channels. Uh, check out her YouTube. Check out her Twitch. Uh, she's producing super fun content. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having um, me. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Uh, this is the You're the third part of this little oh. conversation here, and I was really happy to have someone in the office to talk about all this delicious technology <laughs> stuff. So uh, be sure to subscribe for more rambling conversations like these. <laughs> and uh, I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there supporting it by hitting that fan funding, yeah. by uh, shopping using those links down at the bottom of the video, or by sharing videos on your favorite social sites like Twitter and Reddit and Facebook and the Googles Plus. So please keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next video. Bye, guys.